Welcome to Allie and You, the business success and lifestyle show. I'm Allison Maslin. My friends call me Allie. I'm a serial entrepreneur and a business growth expert. We help business owners grow their business. And today we are talking about reinventing yourself. We're talking about driving lots of leads to your business. I've got the top lead expert, traffic expert here today, Vince Reed on Allie and You. Today on Allie and You, we're going to help you drive tons of traffic to your website. We're going to talk about following your passion, and I have the absolute expert at that today, Vince Reed, uh, who is absolutely amazing at building business, and you've been through the ringer and back, <laughs> right? I have. It's, and, it's been uh, and, and it's such an inspiration. Uh, and you and I met, Vince and I met because we were on the film together, the documentary Inspired by Eleven. And you were awesome in it, as usual. Well, thanks. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and Tamara kind of uh, found us together. And we had a big premiere here in San Diego a few months back. And that was, yeah, was a lot of fun. A lot of so fun. Much fun. Yeah, it really was. My husband's like, I didn't realize so many people were going to show up. I'm like, babe, I've been telling you about this. So anyway, so tell me about, or tell uh, our viewers, let's hear some of the backstory because you're successful now. You've got this great business and you're helping so many people grow their business. Uh, but it wasn't always so easy for you. I mean, you went through some tough times. I did. But first of all, I want to say thank you for having me. Um, you know, when I heard about the film, I did a lot of research on the people in the film, and you obviously caught my attention. I was, I've, I've learned a lot about you through the years, so I just want to say thank you for having me. Oh, that's and, nice, uh, this oh, is, uh, This really is awesome. Thank it's, it's, you. it's definitely um, uh, my pleasure to be here, and I'm excited. So. Oh, great. Well, but that's uh, so nice. the journey, you know, it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey, and I tell people all the time, um, you know, when I'm teaching and coaching them, I say, I feel like a senior citizen a little bit in our industry because it was 2007 when I found the online world. And uh, you know there were those points and times in my life where I'm like, is this gonna work? Is this gonna happen for me? Just give me some little like piece of, of something. Some, give me like a, a glimpse of success somewhere and it just seemed like nothing was happening for me. And I look back to those days and, and to where I am today, it, it's definitely been a journey and uh, I wouldn't change a thing because it's, it's all part of the process. So I, I tell you guys that because no matter where you are in your business, okay, no matter how bad you think it is, we've all been there. And, and honestly, we still go through it. I mean, it's never oh, perfect. Yeah. Oh, There's yeah. always things that come up that we're battling with each and every day. So um, yeah, I don't know how much detail you want me to get yeah, into. Yeah, no, or? I would love <clears> to hear because uh, I think all this is so important because I think that a lot of times too on the online world, you're hearing that a lot, well, you know, making millions overnight and so forth. And you go for a long time and not see anything. And I think that's where people quit. Absolutely. They get frustrated. You're not getting some traction right mm -hmm. away. And I remember for me, I mean, I started out in business. I was 19 years old. And this was like um, in like the older days. Ago. right? Like three yeah. years ago. Exactly. And so it was pre-internet days. And um, we, I was like going door to door and wow. um, building my ad agency and showing my portfolio and all that. I mean, I think I remember just going month after month with rejection and people saying no and uh, all of that stuff. So what do you think that is inside of an entrepreneur or somebody that has passion and is really going after something that keeps you going? What was it that kept you going when you weren't getting a glimpse? You know, I actually know the moment. The exact moment it happened, I actually I actually shared the story today. Um, you know, when I got started, I found a mentor. I was telling you about it before we, we started. And when I when I got started, I thought that everyone knew my mentor. I'm sure if you follow Allison, you're like, man, she's awesome. The world knows who Allison is, but in reality, the world is large. You know, <laughs> most people don't know who I am. You know, this may be your first time uh, meeting me. So when I started generating leads and and utilizing the things that my mentor taught me. 
I remember I called one of my leads and I'm like, you know, my mentor, and I said his name, and like, who's that? And I'm like, you don't know my mentor? Like, they're like, no, we've seen your emails, we've seen what you've sent us. And at that moment, it clicked, it dawned on me. It said, I said, you know, to that person who's reading my email, who's watching my videos, who are connecting with me, to them, I'm the guru. And at that very moment, I just channeled all my focus into the people that were in my circle. And I tell people all the time, if you, you know, don't focus on trying to be a mile wide and an inch deep. If you really go an inch wide and a mile deep, you'll build a business a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Just realize that you have a product, it solves a problem, put it in front of the people who have the problem, your solution, and focus in on them, providing them with value on a consistent basis, you'll build a profitable business. But when I was struggling and when I wasn't making money, I was always outside. I was trying to be someone I wasn't at that point. Um, my my uh, value level wasn't at the point in which I thought it was at. I tell people the amount of money you make represents the amount of value you offer the world. And uh, you know, at that point, uh, my level of expectations did not match my expertise. And I tell people all the time, if you want to make millions of dollars, then you have to have millions of dollars worth of value to offer. Yes, it should match. Yes, right here. Exactly. And when it's out of sync. Um, you know, you're definitely going to have repercussions on one side or another. Absolutely. So For you sure. know, that was the moment when I realized when I, I said, you don't know my mentor, you know me. Okay. Now I know what I got to do. Just continue to get better, continue to solve problems mm -hmm. and provide value. And I think that's an important point because I say entrepreneurs have this disease. It's called EADD, entrepreneurial ADD, right? And it's that shiny object syndrome. And you're all over the place and we're going to talk about social media and so forth and i think that's an issue there as well mm -hmm. is if you can really just you may want to do a lot of things in your life but just pick that one thing for now mm -hmm. and really stay focused with it Absolutely. and that's where you're going to get the biggest results but i think people get scared mm -hmm. and then they say oh i've got to go do something else because this isn't working absolutely and it's part of kind of how we are as human beings i mean Let's face it, most cars, you don't even have to put a key, you just push a button. Push the button, the TV turn. Everything is so instant. Right. So God forbid there's some type of struggle and it, you don't get results immediately. It just doesn't sit right. You feel like you're doing something wrong, especially when you turn on Facebook, you see a show like this and you see someone else doing something well. And you're like, man, I got to be there. And in reality, you, just, you are where you're supposed to be. You just have to continue to day by day, just have trust and faith that you're doing right for your customers. And one thing builds on to the it next does. on the next, Absolutely. right? So um, now you began really getting traction online and uh, you become an expert on so many, so many things with driving traffic. I was, but I was wondering, do you, did you have a technology background? <laughs> because, you know, I'm, uh, I'm an expert on building business and marketing and all of that. But I've been I've watched your videos and some of the things that you're talking about are so technical and I'm thinking, wow, were you like an engineer <laughs> or or what? No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, I'm not technical at all, to be honest with you. Um, I was a pause, stop and go person. Like I'd buy training, I'd buy courses, I'd watch the video, I'd pause it, I'd go do it. Um, and uh, I could, in fact, I could barely send an attachment on an email when I got started. I oh, mean, really? I was literally very. I mean, I had no technical background. Okay. I, I taught myself these things by just getting in there and just, you know, figuring it out. You can't break it. Right. You, know, you can't break, you know, an ads platform. You're just setting up ads. And um, for me, I just love the strategy behind it. You know, I love the strategy behind marketing. And that's really where, where what I do well. You know, I'm not the guy, although I could be, I'm not the guy you want to come to to get you the most traffic and leads. I'm the guy that you want to talk to that's going to get you targeted traffic and leads that convert into sales. Right. So and that's really what this is all right. about, right? Exactly. Because you want to grow your business. So it's more about the quality. Absolutely. Rather than the quantity, which I mm -hmm. think is so important. so important. I remember one night I stayed up till three in the morning because I couldn't get a video uploaded to YouTube and I became obsessed. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I have to figure this out. And uh, my husband thought I was absolutely <laughs> nuts. So um, where do you see, you know, talking about leads, I like to get into that a little bit because just, you know, their their lead, potential leads are, are prospects that are out there that are the right fit for your business. But where do you see that business owners struggle the most 
in finding those leads and then turning those leads into clients? Well, this is kind of a two-part problem. Yes. All right, so you get entrepreneurs who have a lot of money to spend and they go, okay, I can place ads and they try to kind of brute force their way into a market and they end up losing money because they don't understand the platform that they're on. So for example, if you're advertising on, let's say, search traffic, Google or even YouTube where someone searches for something specific, the ad pops up, you can kind of just brute force your way in that sense. But most of the advertising nowadays is done on social media. So, you know, like anything, people are going to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of focus um, put towards community to new marketers coming in. So they're putting their message out there and people are kind of rolling their eyes because it's interrupting them. They're not on Facebook. Like, you know, did you wake up today on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever to buy a product? Right. No one in the world in the history of social media has ever woke up out of dead sleep and said, said I'm yeah, going to go buy, buy a Facebook, product. right? Yeah. But everyone advertises as if that's what people mm -hmm. do. And I think that's the number one problem that people have is that they try to brute force their way in and they end up wasting a lot of money. So, um, you know, you really need to utilize a platform that you feel comfortable on. So if, you are, if you're a Facebook user, leverage Facebook. You should be comfortable with it and figure out ways to build relationships and build a community first and then you can um, you know, present your products and services. So talk about build a community because we hear a lot about that. What does that mean exactly? Because you think of growing up, it's a community, you got your neighborhoods, you got your businesses around mm -hmm. you and so forth. What does that mean, online building a community? Well, the way I would explain it is right now you're watching this probably on your Facebook page. I'm sure you're probably going to upload this to YouTube. Right. Those are your channels. And today, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, these are all the networks. Think of them as NBC, ABC, ESPN, and there's millions of shows on all of those networks. You don't watch every show on every network. You watch the person and the that you connect with. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about when you put out your information is you're just a show on the network. And today, I mean, we can look outside, we can see cars driving by. If you look inside, most people are on their phone. They're watching a network, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. So when you're building a community, if you're focusing on the people that are paying attention to you, then you're basically putting your content where the eyeballs are. So I'll give you an example. Do you want me to give you yeah, an example? Yeah, please All right, do. So I'm a huge Laker fan. Okay. okay. I know they're struggling now, but don't worry, we'll be back. They're coming back. We're coming of back. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a lot of times people think that on social media, the channel, um, the the fan page, for example, has to be about their business. You know, I tell people today, if I'm starting over today, I build a page based on what I love. So, I let's say, for example, I love I love the Lakers. Like I actually did this, by the way, recently. We're going to start building this page. And I think the page is called um, Let's Talk Lakers. So it'd be very similar to this, and I'll just go on and go live and talk about the Lakers. Because you're going to be buying the Lakers. I saw you say that. I on, want the Lakers yes. one day. I yeah. do. I do. Just a little bit. You heard it here. Like, just a, you know, one share, I'd be happy. Right? So um, anyways, my point would be you can build a fan page and target people who like the Lakers. People will start liking that page. You'll build a community. Mm -hmm. Now, a person might say, well, how do I turn that in the business. Mm -hmm. It's simple. How did Oprah turn Oprah into business? Like, what is she an expert in? She's an expert at talking to people. She's built a community. And now because she's built that community, people will do what she says. So if I build a community where people are coming to me and I'm talking about the Lakers, I can say, hey, guys, you know, as you know, I love the Lakers. I also love business. For those of you Laker fans who like business and want to know how I do it or want to know more information about it, go to this link. That's how I build today on social media. But you build a rapport first. Build the rapport in the community first. Now, someone may say, well, it's easy for you to say, Vince. You have your Vince Reed fan page. Well, build your page, right? Build your page and make it based on something that you love and that you're passionate about. And people will come to that community and, and start to connect with you. Another thing to remember is you don't have to have one channel. You know, the beautiful thing about um, the online space is you can have multiple fan pages and multiple channels on that network. You can have a page on your favorite sports team. If you like dancing, if you like fishing, if you like business, you can have all these different channels and you can build right. those networks. So I would focus on that. And what I do is I use traffic and drive traffic to the communities and then I deliver my message and then it, it spins from there. Right. Yeah. I mean, have fun with it, yeah. right? Have fun. So if you're a lighting company, for instance, uh, or landscaping, 
talk about beautiful yards around the world mm -hmm. and uh, you know places that you want to travel. It doesn't Absolutely. have to be the actual product that you're selling. Absolutely. You can talk about the things that you're passionate about and then you mix your business in there. Like, you know, if in a landscaping, for example, or you're doing lighting, be at a place where you're talking about that and you say, you know, my company, what we do is we do lighting. You just talk about it naturally. And if you have a business that needs something like this, we can definitely help you out with that and then continue on with what you're passionate about. I think that that is where social media is heading. Right. Um, and I think people have to really just kind of come to grips with, with that. And I think it should make it fun. You get to do what you love and talk about what you love and still build a business behind it. Right, but if you go to an event like you, where you and I met or you're at a networking event, you're not going to go walk, well, some people do, but to go walk up to someone and say, hey, this is what I do. You want to buy my product, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to start a conversation. Absolutely. Tell me about what you, what you do, what are your passions, what are your interests, and you're building that rapport, and it's just transferring that same conversation online. Absolutely. Same exact thing. I mean, you don't want to ask that person to marry you on the first date. <laughs> you yeah. got to kind of warm up a little. Or you could, but you know, <laughs> that's pushing it for sure. You got to you got to do the romance, right. you got to do right. the flowers, yes. you got to, you, you, you know. Gotta, exactly. Do the date nights and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so you're an expert on a lot of online platforms or channels as you call them, right? And so I think in because I mentor so many business owners and a lot of what they struggle with is time and trying to manage their clients and their team and their marketing and all of the different things that they're doing. It's like, oh my God, one more platform. What would you say uh, to those business owners that say, I just can't wrap my brain around all these, or wrap my arms around it and really get traction with them? Well, the first thing is you don't have to be like me and you know have all the different channels. You just need to be really good at one. Okay, I would, tell, I would actually advise against trying to do everything. You know, sometimes you get social media experts, they come in, we got to get you on this, you can do that. And then the person's head blows up. You don't <laughs> want that to happen. Focus on the one that you're comfortable with, get good at that, and then move on from there. But in terms of what to do each and every day, it's simple. I mean, it's really, it doesn't need to be overcomplicated. You don't need a million ads running. People just need to have a clear cut idea of what it is that you do. You need to provide value on a consistent basis. And for example, let's just take this show, for example, you know, each and every week, this is going to be delivered and you're right. going to use that piece of content and you're going to put it out on social media. Same thing with your channel. You're going to figure out one piece of content that solves a problem and you're going to put that out each and every week or each and every month. But whatever you choose to do, just make sure that you're consistent with it. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the traffic side, all you're doing is kind of giving that a boost. So you put the content out and then you simply just leverage that piece of content and drive traffic to your existing audience on that platform. Keep it very simple. Right, right. And you know, the, I think the predictability is super important that people are counting on that. Yes. Right? And then they're going to show up and they're going to tell other people about it. Absolutely. You want people to, if like they don't see it, to be like, what happened? That's how you want to be thinking about being consistent. Like right. if you didn't do it, people would probably reach out what happened to the show this week, right? Right. And that's, that's kind of how you want to be thinking right. as, you're, as you're doing your And then they're on to something next. So, uh, but let's talk a little bit about driving leads and some specifics. Okay. And we don't have to go over all the platforms, but let's just say like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and I don't okay. know, something like that. <laughs> Twitter. Cool. Cool. Okay. So a specific strat, like, so someone watching, what can I do right now to get leads? Yeah. Tell me something okay. specific that I could like, you know, where I'm, when I'm done with the show, I'm going to do right now, okay. like just some little tips and tricks. All right. So I always break everything down into three parts. Okay. I call it my act formula. Okay. And the first step of marketing online is to acquire um, a new audience. So it could be, for example, on Facebook, getting a person to be a fan of your page. And something that's a little bit more technical, but no one freak out, um, what's really popular now is retargeting. And retargeting is basically if you've ever like, clicked on an ad only to have that person follow you around the internet and you keep seeing them everywhere, that's called retargeting. And on sites like Facebook, you can build what's called custom audience, custom audiences. So if someone hits any of your content, you don't lose them forever. See, when I got started, if I ran an ad and I paid for that click, and they didn't opt in or they didn't buy, I lost them. Right. Today, I can continue to advertise to them. 
So in the ACT formula, the A is you acquiring a new fan, whether it's a fan or you building some sort of audience. And that's really the key, in my opinion, to social media is the audience building. So think of it this way. Imagine a year from now, you have, let's say, 50,000, 100,000, a million or whatever people watching this. Imagine a year from now, and that's just one show. All the people that watched every show, you have an audience. Right. That's just as powerful as an opt-in subscriber. That's some powerful data. Right. And I think that people don't do that when they come into social media. They just want the click. And they're not forgetting about, they're forgetting about the asset that they could be building. Right. So once you get the A part, you move into the middle part, which is the C, which I call contribution. And contribution is you simply doing what we're doing now, providing value, helping your audience get what it is that they need to build their business, giving them a different or a deeper level of insight. All right. And I do that with videos, blog posts, live stream videos, just consistently feeding. So it's really audience. like give, 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 give. give. And then the last part of the T is the transaction. And the transaction would be me going for the lead, making the offer for my product and service. And as you can see, it's kind of the dating process. Right. We've introduced ourselves, we've contributed, and then we've said, okay, hey, if you want more, go to the next step. And for me, you know, what I think a lot of people out there have to realize is that a very small percentage of people are gonna buy your products and services. More people are gonna just watch and learn, and maybe later on down the road they're gonna buy, and that's okay, you can still build a big business doing that and those sm that small percentage of people that want to buy from you they're the ones in that t side that are going to opt in and you're going to give them a choice hey if you'd like to go deeper if you'd like additional coaching if you'd like me to help you with your lead generation here's the here's what i have to offer right and if you just stay in that flow no matter what platform you're on if you just always think about that process you're usually on the right the side. act i really like that i mean we've had i've been doing webinars for years and we do a lot of live stream now uh, and we're able to track it, which I think is, is important to do, is to look at the analytics. But, you know, we've seen people that have, you know, watched 10 webinars or 15 webinars before they mm -hmm. actually move and take action. Sometimes it's the timing. Uh, sometimes they're just, you know, wanting to gain the information and see that this is something that they really resonate with and so forth. So just because somebody doesn't, act now I mean if you if you do an event or a webinar and you get a hundred people that have signed up and nobody buys you're still ahead mm -hmm. that's a hundred people like if we had a hundred people sitting out here right now we'd go oh, that's a lot of people absolutely absolutely yeah. you know be proud of those wins and realize that they're going to act at their own pace and, and I also tell people that experience that to look at their own lives like how often do you get on something and just buy right away yeah. Like you normally have to like, it's a process. And I think that, that helped me and hopefully that helps you as well. Yeah, you bank it and mm -hmm. you think, you know what, this is something I'm kind of interested in. Absolutely. So um, what, what about Instagram? What is something that you could do? I mean, because this is something I, I, I don't think we're using Instagram enough. Okay. Yeah, I, I love Instagram. Um, it's probably, right now we're actually doing our, right when we leave here, I have a webinar for Instagram. But okay. yeah, we're in the middle of it, so I'm like loving it. Um, one of the cool things about Instagram is now they've extended the amount of time in which you can do videos. So you can now put out 60 second videos where before they were like 10 and then it went to 15 seconds and then 30. Now it's a minute, which is a long time. And what's the best part of Instagram are the eyeballs that you get on your offers. Like, for example, on Facebook, there's so many distractions, right? I mean, even if you watch a video, they're already showing you other videos you should be looking at. So it's just right. like chaos. Whereas on Instagram, I mean, you only are looking at it on your phone and the eyeballs are right there. And with ads, it's the only way to take a person from an image or a video to your website. So for example, if you post an image or a video, just upload it directly as an update on Instagram, they can just tap it and like it. Or they have to go to like your description of the actual profile to hit your link and it's just hard to get to your website, right? right. So when you're running an ad on Instagram, it's the only way, just like a Facebook ad, take them from the image or the video to your website. And right now, Instagram ads aren't sensationalized. Like no one really is talking about it. So it's that window right now for you to really take advantage of Instagram. So I highly advise it. And, this, and the same strategies apply. I mean, it's run through Facebook. Right. So you run the ads through Facebook. Um, Facebook owns Instagram. So it's the same process. 
Just do the same things you're doing on, on, on Facebook, on Instagram, and you'll get, you'll get some great results. Yeah, and do give some real value on the videos, the 60-second videos. It's cool because when you do a video on Instagram, it almost runs kind of like, I don't even know what you, know what you call it, like a GIF, you know, when it starts and it keeps yeah. playing. So if someone's watching your video, it'll just keep playing. Yeah. And you can direct them to the learn, to click the button. You can do a lot of stuff in a minute. And I kind of treat it like a commercial. You know, what are, how long are most commercials? One minute. And it's a great way for you to talk about your business, provide daily tips and value, and run traffic to those on Instagram and build a huge, huge following. Yeah. So, so you got to right away get on there and start uh, utilizing that. Absolutely. I think that's awesome. I'm going to do that. So now you work hard as a business owner. It sounds like you are very excited about what you're doing and there's always change. So you're always learning Absolutely. new things. But how do you stay inspired? How do you work on your mindset? Because we do know as business owners, stuff happens all the time. Things break down, uh, opportunities that you thought were going to happen fall through. Uh, people that you know are working with you could leave you know a number of things can happen mm -hmm. so how do you keep your mindset strong and stay inspired through all of that man well I watch your show oh well see <laughs> smart man I do and I, I try to put myself around positive entrepreneurs and um, people that challenge me and push me to to be better and you know you've heard the term if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room yeah. Um, I truly believe that. So, you know, my most of my friends are entrepreneurs who are pushing me each and every day. So that's really something that helps me. But every day I have a morning walk. I actually do a live show every day. Like um, I walk for about an hour in the first 15 minutes. I just talk to my audience and then I continue my walk and I'm listening to audio books and podcasts. And, um, you know, I'm praying. I'm spending that time to just give thanks and pray and all that stuff in the morning. And that kind of keeps me grounded. And I think, um, I said this the other day, one of the things about that walk is that I used to do that walk when I had nothing, when I was just getting started. And I was like, had this hope and this dream that like the internet was going to work for me. And I would do the walk every morning, I'd do the prayer and I wasn't making any money. And now to realize I'm still doing that to this day, I always can kind of go back to the beginning. So those are some of the things that kind of I love that. Up. And I, I think sometimes people have a hard time even stepping away from their computer just to kind mm -hmm. of rethink things. And when you have those rituals in your life, I think it's so important. It's really all about the whole person, the body, the mind, the spirit, mm -hmm. and everything to have those kind of practices. Um, I'm really into physical fitness, and I've been with the same trainer for 20 years. And in fact, he kicked my butt this morning. Um, and, you know, I yelled at him a little bit and all that <laughs> kind of stuff, but that's all right. Um, so I, I, I think, and those were, and I, I even remember, like, this is kind of funny, being in some of the toughest times, like when my daughter was a teenager and she was just so just challenging and all of that. And I remember being in a plank, you know, the exercise, the plank, mm -hmm. you know, for your, your stomach. And I thought to myself, if I can get through this workout, I can get through anything. <laughs> so it's funny I, you say that. I don't know if you do, but sometimes I also fitness is very important, and that's part of my, my day as well. But there'll be times when I'm in those situations, and I will put the pressure like, if you go down, then your whole everyone is going to fail. Like your whole team's going to fail. You got to yeah. make it through because like I'll be t like building myself up. Like everyone's on my back if I don't stay in this plank or whatever. So. It's kind of cool. Oh yeah, our I, trainer does older, that. Though. All that. No, he calls me out. He's like, if Allison does this wrong, everybody has to do it over. <laughs> and I know Andrea's in the back there, probably laughing because she's in the room when that's <laughs> happening too. So, that's anyway, funny. so speaking of that, do you have some favorite books or kind of teachings that you kind of go back to? I do. My favorite book is a book called *The Richest Man Who Ever Lived* by Stephen K. Spot, Stephen K. Scott, excuse me, and it's a biblical book. It's actually based on King Solomon and uh, it it's, was one of the first books I read um, that was, was not like an entrepreneurial book. Right. I mean it is based on, it is an entrepreneurial book but it was like based on, on, on the Bible and mm -hmm. brought business to the Bible to make me get over the fact that some people have a problem with money. Like they say um, you know, if you want to make a lot of money or money's the root of all evil and all these things. So I used to battle with these situations like, mm -hmm. you know, is it okay to kind of take it to the next, to the next step? So that book made everything okay. 
and kind of pushed me forward. So that's why it's one of my favorite books. Oh, that's great. And I, you know what? That's actually a really important point. I think a, a lot of people struggle because whatever you were brought up with and the beliefs, the mm -hmm. mindset of your family and um, if your parents were raised during the Depression mm -hmm. or, or whatever, and we don't realize that, but unconsciously, yes. we can bring that into our lives. So some people feel like, you know, I get right there and I seem to sabotage my success. And, uh, and generally, 99% of the time, it's a mindset issue. Mm -hmm. There's a part of you that feels that either you're not worthy or it's a bad thing and so forth. And I always say, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it, but gosh, when you create a profitable business, you can change the world. I mean, nothing can change the world more than entrepreneurialism. It's all of the new inventions that we're creating, employing people, helping them to have mm -hmm. a better life, and then giving back to charity, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's actually our moral obligation to give back and to provide value. I mean, when you have more money, you can help more people. Right. And you know, you've heard it before. If, you, if you're a bad person and you have more money, you're just going to be a worse person. If you're a good person and you have more money, you're just going to be a better person. It just depends on how you are as a person, and it's just going to bring out more of that. The extension so, of that. I absolutely. like that. That's very true. Well, this is really great, and it's inspiring, and, um, you know, you are the true example for a lot of people to see that uh, you had no idea about the online world and you approached it, you taught yourself and you built it up. I mean, truly self-made and that's, uh, that's pretty remarkable and, and a beautiful thing. What advice would you say to the business owners that are out there, whatever level that you're at and whatever kind of day that you're having, what would you say to them as far as you know, helping them move forward? You know, I would say to them, you know, moving from you know, we just launched a new company. We, I just recently sold a company. So my new company, we work with entrepreneurs like yourself. And, and, and other, what, tell everyone what the company is called. Um, Internet Traffic Factory. Okay, Internet yes. Traffic Factory. Okay. Yes, so one of the things that we found in dealing with more entrepreneurs is that they like to outsource their traffic. So when they hear lead generation marketing, they're like, oh my gosh, sounds too technical. We pay someone to do that. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell you this, that no one's going to care about your business more than you. You know, we find entrepreneurs that are, like have good business ideas, and we were talking about this at lunch, and you know, they'll get the business cards, they'll have their website, they'll do all this stuff, and the last thing on their mind is how they're gonna acquire customers. Right. And you know, we're in an era, I call it the social media boom. It's no different than the real estate boom. I mean, if you could go back in time and buy some of these houses over here on the beach, yeah. you know, 45, 50 years ago, you'd do it, right? Right. And I think right now, I don't think people... 10 years ago. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I don't think people realize the era we're in. Like, we are of the ability. I mean, we just talked about having your own channel on a network. That's where people's eyeballs are. You have the ability to build an amazing community that could set yourself and family up for life if you just learned it. Right. Right. But you're going to go past that opportunity and be off to someone else, right? To go market your business for you. Just master one and just take it seriously. And, uh, you know, you'll be happy you did. That'd be the advice. And I'd I'm give sure them. the clients you work with, I, you know, I tell, we tell our clients too, because sometimes they're like, I just want to have someone do this. I don't want to be involved in it. But those people don't understand your business. They don't understand your audience. And you need to be able to know what they're doing so that you can monitor to see if this is working or it's not. And that's where a lot of people it's throw, true. throw it's true. money away. So how do people find you? And you've got some great videos where you're teaching a lot of these tips and so forth. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook um, on pretty much any social media site at Vince Read Live. So facebook.com forward slash Vince Read Live. Um, or venturee.com, my website. You can definitely okay. check me out there. Great, we'll put that all below. And then I'm really excited because you're going to be part of our big event. I'm excited. That's coming up. I'm excited. The CEO Success Network Retreat. And it's August 12th to the 14th in beautiful Coronado, right on the beach in San Diego. And this business, uh, this event is an intimate retreat for business owners that are established and really ready to take it to the next level, build their team, create the strategic plan, and obviously marketing and building traffic is all a part, that, a part of that. And just being around, like you said, if you're the smartest person in the room, then you need to 
you know, you need to up level. Right. And so coming to an event like this, you're going to meet all these influential entrepreneurs and you could be sitting next to somebody that could really open doors for you. So that's what it's all about. Events are, I mean, we've met at events. I don't know if there's any entrepreneur that, are, that, um, that I know that I haven't met at right. live events. I mean, it's really the place to be. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Yeah, definitely. Go to CEOSuccessNetwork.com. And uh, thank you. Thank you. This has been so this fun. Was fun. Yeah, we could talk on and on. <laughs> and uh, we will continue the conversation. So definitely check out Vince Reed and all that he has to offer. He's really amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed it today. So until next time on Allie and You, put yourself out there, elevate yourself because you are worth it. Bye, everybody.